In our recent survey, almost 90% of Surfer users agreed that topic clusters are very important to their SEO strategy. And that's because topic clusters, also known as content hubs, help establish your site as an authority in the eyes of your audience and search engines, which can lead to improved rankings. It's a tried and tested model. So in this video, I will show you how to build your SEO strategy using the topic cluster method. Let's get right into it. There are three main components in the topic cluster. The pillar page, supporting cluster pages, and internal links. Essentially, this method involves creating a main pillar page that provides a comprehensive overview of a broad topic and then linking it to several related cluster pages that delve into specific aspects of that topic in more detail. Let's look at the practical example of a topic cluster. Shopify has built a cluster on the topic of dropshipping. They have a pillar page in the form of ultimate guide which covers all aspects of dropshipping. They have created dozens of articles addressing related subtopics such as private labeling, print-on-demand products, and dropshipping niches. Lastly, they have linked to these cluster pages throughout the article, both in the body of the article and as further recommended readings. Someone interested in dropshipping can find everything they need without leaving the website. This is how you can get people to stick longer and establish your site as an authority on the topic. Now let's walk through the process of creating topic clusters for your own site. <clears throat> Say, you run a nutrition business and you want to organize your site content into topic clusters. Your first step is to identify core topics you can build your clusters around. These core topics should be broad enough to warrant numerous articles while still adhering to a single concept. In this step, you can rely on your knowledge and research tools. As a starting point, ask a simple question. What do you want to be known for and build authority around? A nutrition business might want to be known for things like healthy eating, superfoods, or weight management programs. This, of course, would largely depend on the products and services that they offer. If you go into Surfer and plug in nutrition in the article ideas bar, you will see a number of topics you can build your clusters around, such as guide to healthy eating, importance of food, and essential nutrition. If you already have some existing content on your site, then I recommend you generate a so-called domain map. Simply connect your Google Search Console account to Surfer and it will automatically organize your content into clusters. This way, you can see which topics you have covered, how to organize it into clusters, and what type of content you need to create to complete the cluster. Here's how that looks like for our site. Oh, and by the way, if you are a visual person like me, you will love this interactive map. You can see how all of those clusters that Surfer found fit together, what are the relationships between them, and finally, what is your coverage so far. Going back to the nutrition example, you should focus on the topics that are relevant to you. Then you can prioritize these topics based on their average keyword difficulty and the average monthly search volume. Ideally, you should focus on one topic cluster at the time. So prioritize topics that have a relatively high search volume and moderate difficulty. In this case, importance of eating healthy is a very lucrative topic to start with as it has a search volume of over 40k per month and a 68 difficulty score. Once you've chosen your core topics, you can move on to map out your first cluster. This means choosing your pillar page and supporting cluster pages. As we saw from the Shopify example, the pillar page is typically in the form of comprehensive guide that offers a broad overview of your core topic and serves as a gateway to your cluster content. In this case, the pillar page can be, let's say, complete guide to healthy eating or eating healthy one-on-one. -on -one. Next, look up your core topics in Google to identify potential subtopics. First place to look at is directly at the Google search bar. From Google Autocomplete, you can note down subtopics such as importance of eating healthy food, importance of eating healthy food for kids, importance of eating healthy diet, importance of eating healthy during pregnancy. In the same way, you can find subtopics ideas by looking at the people also ask and related searches section on Google. Note down the topics that are relevant to you. Each of these topics can serve as a supporting cluster page. And voila, you've mapped your first cluster, but you can easily automate this process with Surfer. In Surfer, you can also see whether each of these subtopics has enough search volume to make them worth covering and how difficult it is to rank for each. For each cluster topic, Surfer will also recommend supporting cluster pages together with their respective metrics. What's left now is to write the content and link the pages with each other. 
Writing SEO content is a complex topic that we covered in our previous video. So if you are interested in learning more, please see that video. <laughs> Just keep in mind that you can go about it manually, only rely on SEO writing and AI tools such as Surfer's Content Editor and Surfer AI. You can select all the articles in Topic Cluster and create content editors for manual writing or generate articles with Surfer AI. I recommend first writing your pillar page and then one by one all of the supporting cluster pages. As you create each page, you should link them together. Link from your supporting pages upwards to the pillar page and vice versa. Also, link the supporting pages to each other. This way, you will optimize the flow of link juice among interlinked web pages and emphasize the importance of the pillar page, considering that all cluster pages link to it. When adding links, make sure to use descriptive anchor tags. Avoid hyperlinking text such as click here, read more, check out this article, and so on. Instead, use natural and contextual anchor text that hints at the content on the cluster page. When writing your content in Surfer, you can automatically insert contextual links on each article with just one click. Once you've done with one cluster, you can then move on to the next one. How many topics clusters should you create? That's a really great question. The honest answer is it depends, but ideally you should have five to 10 topics clusters addressing your site's core themes. These numbers aren't set in stone though. Think of them as a rule of thumb with the exact number of clusters depending on the factors like information that Google deems relevant to your topic, how many clusters your competitors have, topic availability in your niche and your existing content. As we've mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's best to start your clusters with long tail keywords that don't have a high search volume and a competition. By doing so, you can drill a small hole in your niche, which you'll later expand as you build more authority. That's why it is important to rely on keyword research tools like Surfer when building your topic clusters. You can sign up for our seven day free trial and see for yourself how Surfer makes building topic clusters a breeze. Remember, creating a topic cluster takes time and careful planning, but it's more than worth the effort. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, hit the like button and subscribe our channel. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Cheers.